watching iRacing on the Ghostfire Media Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Ghostfire Media. I am Adam Wood. My co-host tonight is Josh Lassen. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. I'm looking forward to watching these guys run around Kansas. It's one of my favorite tracks to run. It's a great one to watch a race at because it's fast. There's a lot of lines you can take, and it's going to make for some great racing tonight. Yeah, these guys are going to have a blast out here. You can uh, kind of run anywhere with these Xfinity cars here at Kansas, and uh, I, I can't wait to see what these guys can do. I mean, you're, you're going to have some aggressive guys running the bottom line. You're going to have some guys running the middle line. You'll have the guys up top trying to save their tires and trying to be the least aggressive at the start. And uh, I'm hoping for some really wild pitch strategies here tonight, Kansas. I honestly, that's another great thing about Kansas. If even if we go green tonight, you're going to see a lot of people just going on varying pit strategies because tires aren't going to make the kind of difference that they would at other tracks. But at the same time, you're still going to end up having some people try to undercut. We're going to see people try to overcut. And it's... It's just going to be a lot of talking points for us tonight and a lot of entertainment and shifting around the field as people make their way in for fuel and tires. Yeah, unlike, you know, other mile and a half tracks that might be at a bottom lane only or a top lane only, I believe tonight we're going to be able to see a lot of lanes being used. Uh, tonight, though, right now the air temperature is around 72 degrees the track temperature is 84 degrees so there's some grip out there in the track the tracks not too hot for these guys out here to make these moves no and that's going to be the biggest thing that we're going to see with this cool of a track people are going to be very aggressive we're late afternoon so we're going to actually get to see a lot of people try to make low moves the line to be on is going to be the wall there's no way around that that is yeah. what everyone's going to want to run exactly everybody's going to try to want to run that upper groove but the earlier laps the first five to ten laps and every pit cycle every restart uh it's going to be the bottom line everybody's going to dive there to, to basically short change those corners to cut them off well, and, uh, and that's going to be the biggest thing that we're going to have to watch for tonight because these guys, there's no way around it. They're going to have to run some very interesting lines to make things work as we'll go ahead and jump out here with Cameron Hearn as he's crossing the stripe. We're going to see a lot of guys try to drop down to that very bottom as they're going through just to shave a little bit of time off and right now tyler hensley is the only other car on track so we'll get to see what his plan is for going fast and getting that qualifying time and yeah, it, I, he's I, going I on the, the low one here but i think the long run is definitely going to be along that wall yeah, I think, uh, you know, your first lap here coming out of turn four, you want to be on the upper wall trying to get the most momentum, the most speed carrying off the corners. But for fast lap wise, 
you need to hit the bottom of that corner wrap it around to get your fast laps burn those tires up and then uh you'll start fresh with new ones uh at the grid so yeah there's no harm in trying to get that fast lap but right now we're only seeing a few people making their way out on track right now as we have alan elwood in a brand new paint scheme this week as that shouldn't shock me at all but it's gonna keep me confused it's bright though i mean it's way out there i love it uh it's a beautiful purple car um you know he always puts together the greatest paint schemes and uh you know he, he loves to show them off well and tonight he's currently just finishing his first lap up as we're slowly starting to see a lot of people make their way around on the track tonight but the biggest thing i'm waiting to see is how the line gets modified as we go around because alan is running the exact line that i would anticipate to be the preferred line as opposed to as we were watching other people with tyler hensley dropping down to that lowest groove as you come through the turns but Kansas is, it's an inter intermediate, but it's very aggressively banked to make it to where these cars are going to be able to hold a lot more speed. As we see Alan Elwood running that top line, take over pole position. Yeah, but he got the rest of his team out there. We got Hayden Pastoris, Michael Stroll, John Gervon, Justin Morton, Casey Shu. They're all out there. They're waiting till the last minute to get out there and run their laps. Well, and, and you know, it's working for them because they are going out as we'll go ahead and we'll take a quick look. There's Michael Stroll. He got his first lap done. He most likely ran that top groove the first time around to get himself up to speed. And now we're seeing him drop all the way down, hoping to shave a little bit of distance off. And he holds that, goes up and arcs it down towards the line and we'll see if that was the way to go and that only gets him up into fifth yeah i mean you know these cars are going to drive completely different when we actually drop the green flag these guys are going to be able to with the extra draft they're going to be actually running five to ten mile an hour faster going into these corners so we're going to have to watch to see how well, you know, the, the tire's going to hold up with the extra draft and extra push going into the corners than what they're used to during these uh, single file practices and uh, qualifying runs that they're, use, they're doing now. Well, as we have just a little bit under two minutes left in the qualifying session, there's still close to 10 people that have not set a lap at this point. And I'm finding that somewhat surprising, but at the same time. We have a lot of people all on track though right now. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's say we can six. follow up with Thomas Baresi, who's at this point seeming to be a favorite every week to win the race. And we'll see if he can get himself a nice quality lap in to be able to put himself in the right position to just take this race and run away. And that only, that lap there only put him in 10th. So it looks like Alan Elwood had the right idea, just hold that top line the whole way around and just take all the extra speed that comes along with it. Uh, he He's trying to run that middle high line right there, just like um, Alan Elwood did on that last lap. It, uh, it's good for one more position. He moved up to P19, or sorry, P9. Uh, kind of looks like... Everybody that's on the track's already done both their laps. Only people As so far haven't. We have hit the end. So let's go ahead and take a look at our grid for the night. 
And I really need to remember to reset that once in a while. Our poll setter tonight is Alan Elwood taking his namesake award. Second is Chad. One week we'll actually remember to ask him his name. Week or er, in third is Cameron Hearn. Fourth, Tyler Hensley. Fifth, Michael Stroll. Sixth, Randy Bechtel. Seventh is Hayden Pistorius. Eighth is Boomer Logan. Ninth, Thomas Baresi. Tenth is Justin Morton. Eleventh is Brad Slaughter Jr. Twelfth is Eric Wineland. Thirteenth is Blake Gordon. Fourteenth is Will Roberts. Fifteenth is Brian Keita. 16th is Joe Dinsmore. 17th is John Gervon. 18th is Danny Ware. 19th is Brendan Bernhardt. And rounding out the top 20 is Zach Edwards. And then 21st, we have Casey Shu. 22nd, Norm Pelletier. 23rd, Sean Carmody. 24th, Travis McQuiston. 25th, Guile Brooks. 26th is Cal Flarsky. 27th is David Mott Jr., 28th is Tyler Dolger, and 29th and rounding out the field is Kyle Cooper. Alan Elwood gets the Elwood poll once again I, this season. And I'm not going to say it's rigged, but it's <laughs> starting to feel that way. Oh, man, these guys are going to have a, their hands full tonight. Um I can't wait to see it. I, I want to see this fanning out going when they cross the line. I feel that everybody's going to kind of, you know, make it three, maybe four wide going into turn one, trying to fight for every position on this re on this initial start. Well, and that's going to be the big thing that we're going to get to see today is a whole lot of fighting. Kansas is a great track for running too wide as we see the pace car peel away with everyone behind them honestly it's gonna make for a lot of great racing hopefully a lot of clean racing but at the same time you know what a little bit of wrecking isn't gonna be the worst for everyone it's entertaining these guys are running in the apron here They're trying to save their tires save the fuel shortcut the track well and Unfortunately, we aren't 100% positive on what the fuel length is going to be tonight. And honestly, that's going to make life more entertaining for all of us because we are going to get to see in real time how long someone is going to actually be able to make this car last. And... Um. I'm looking forward to a great race, and I'm looking forward to everybody out there commenting and telling us uh, who do you guys think is going to win tonight? As the pace car pulls off, and green light flag is off. And Alan Elwood gets a great pull on him. He hits out a lot of one, two car lengths on the outside. Cameron Hearn, though, is on his back bumper as they go into turn one. And Cameron Hearn getting that upper line Allen is just trying to take advantage of everyone not being fully up to speed run that low line the shorter distance and now we're going to see him just slot into where he's probably going to spend most of the night tonight but it also yeah, right. looks like Chad is going to go ahead and try to get himself down below force Cameron Hearn to run that slightly higher line through the front stretch and he's going to try to use up as much of his tires as he can. But Cameron Hearn, with that extra speed from the outside line, is definitely going to make it to where he's going to go ahead, drop back. And that's probably where he's going to be staying for quite some time as the cars behind him are staying two by two. And that's going to make things a little interesting to where we can see most of that field towards the back from fourth on really haven't gotten themselves in line quite yet and are just jockeying for position and that's going to yeah. let our leaders just pull away yeah right now you see the low line it can make up some difference but you have this line of cars on the outside 
they have a draft. I mean, they're going to be able to use this draft to their advantage to be able to pull on them, go down the back straightaway here. So as they run this slow line, they might cut off just a little bit in the middle of the corners, but this back stretch allows them to pull that top line to pull away from everybody at the bottom so they lose all the ground that they made up. Oh, Eric Wineland really shoves it in there back there uh, in front of Thomas Bressy. He went from the bottom lane to top lane to the open hole. Well, as he's he's making that low line work in comparison to everyone else and having the low line is an advantage as they come through the tri oval because it's a shorter distance and it's not going to kill your tires down there. The only thing you have to worry about is maybe re-entering onto the banking, upsetting the car slightly. But Eric Wineland is currently up four positions and looking to take a few more. He's out there side drafting, going on the back straightaway. He's dropping on the bottom. He finds a hole. Side, if he can't find it, he's side drafting. Uh, he's doing his car whatever he has to do to try and leapfrog his competitors here. And it's working out well right now. He is currently in seventh position and tied for the hard charger with the car that is in front of him that he is trying to catch up to at this point in Brad Slaughter Jr. Yeah, I, I, only thing I'm looking at now is he's really pushing his car compared to, let's say, the number nine of Hayden Pastoris, who's running the high line mainly. What's their tire fall off going to look like compared to in about 10, 15 laps between each other? But we're starting to see Michael Stroll try to put a move and gets the move done on Tyler Hensley to get himself back up and once spot in front of his starting position and now he's got to set his sights to try to get himself up to those leaders who are over a half second ahead of him and here at Kansas that's a gap yeah it's hard to come up with that I mean you're, you're going to get a little bit of draft but by the time it actually takes two then that back straight away you're already moving into turn three and you basically lost it well, uh, but the one advantage he does have is he's got a little bit of help behind him. And if they can, with Tyler Hensley and Bla Brad Slaughter Jr. fighting a little bit right there, if one of them can get up on his bumper, get a little bit of a draft to help him, that would be immense in trying to close that gap. Yeah, they're going to have to work together because those front three right now are running nose to tail almost. Uh, I know they're... They got a you know two three four car gap in between them, but they're all running on the same high line. Whereas these guys are all spread out throughout the corners, still slicing and dicing and making some moves. Well, and they will keep doing that because I have a feeling everyone is just right now waiting for that first incident. But everybody's running clean for the most part. We are single file with a few exceptions and right now Brad Slaughter Jr. is right on that bumper of Michael Stroll and this is what they need to do because that yeah. is going to take away any hope that Tyler Hensley has of slotting in and getting around them. Eric Weinland still out there. He's running the bottom. He runs the top. He's running whatever he can to try to propel himself forward and use the momentum as he slices up in front of Hayden Pastores right there coming off the corner. And that's not what you want to see is Brad Slaughter looks like he tries to push Tyler Hensley a little bit down, maybe throw him off his rhythm ever so slightly to where they can just line up. But he's using that side draft and there he goes. He drops in behind them. He finally has enough room, but Eric Weinland is not content staying behind him and is forcing him up onto the higher line than we're really seeing anyone run right now. And Brad Slaughter Jr. dropped down, try to cut the try over a little bit sooner, a little bit shorter of a distance, but it looks like he lost ground to Michael Stroll by doing that. And it was losing the draft as we see Eric Weinland slot himself up right in front of Tyler Hensley, but he's not going to sit around and wait. He's just going to try to take that position back. Yeah, it's like these guys were getting the momentum off the toe of the, dra uh, the draft right here of the two or three cars in front of them, and they're trying to use every inch of that momentum they have to uh, try and leapfrog their competitors. 
Well, and you know what? I won't say that this is the biggest position track that we're going to see these guys run on. Obviously, we watched them run on USA International as Brad Slaughter Jr. actually gets a great pass done on Michael Stroll. And these two leapfrogging one another probably is not going to help their case as if we jump up to the front, Alan Elwood has put together just a massive gap to Cameron Hearn and even more if we look back, Chad is just becoming a little dot off in the distance there. I mean, and that's what, you know, Allen and Cameron Hearn want to see right now. They want to see these guys behind them go two to three wide, dropping top to bottom, wearing their tires out because the more they these guys uh, jockey for positions, run side by side, run the bottom, run the middle, the more they're tearing off their tires and the more these guys are saving up front. They, these guys don't have to push the car as hard, especially Allen and Cameron Hearn. They're both sitting out front. They're both teammates. They understand what's on the line here. So they're communicating most likely back and forth to tell them, hey, man, let's not go full throttle here. Let's kind of let off go in the corner a little bit more than we were. You know, let's save our tires in case somebody does make it up to us, then we can make the push. But right now, we're starting to see this group that was fighting Brad Slaughter Jr., He's making that push for third place right now. Yeah, he's closed the gap there on uh, Chad. Uh, so that's the next like big battle that's gonna happen is for third outside of Eric Wineland, Tyler Hensley, and Michael Stroll. These guys are still putting on a heck of a show. Well, and you know what? Eric Wineland does get that low line, is able to cut off the front end of Michael Stroll and get the position, but I'm not sure that's gonna last too much longer. We are, we still have 100 laps of 117, and he has had to have done some irreparable damage to those tires. Yeah, you got Thomas Bressy now right now in the 24 coming up in the on this thing. They got, uh, he seems like he's got a little bit more speed than these guys. He closed the gap pretty quickly on Hayden Pastores. And he's bringing another pack with him. We got Blake Gordon, Will Roberts, Justin Morton, and Randy Bachel right there, all in the next pack, trying to join in on this. This pack's fun. Well, and the more the merrier. I want to see a whole lot of fighting here as we see Tyler Hensley and Michael Stroll get pretty close there. But Michael Stroll has an amazing run on Eric Wineland and he is just looking to get that fourth place or fifth place back but while you were while you're looking at that chad uh got passed by brad slaughter jr and all of that running of the low line probably hurt him as he slides up looks like he Ooh. may have tagged the wall there a little <laughs> bit <laughs> if he didn't he, he flirted very dangerously with that wall oh hi but Chad is crossing him over, but I don't think he's gonna have the run coming out of four that he's gonna need to hold off that extra speed of the top line as Brad Slaughter Jr. is chopping noses off to keep himself up there in third and having an opportunity to keep that position and keep it as well as he can, but he is not going away, and this battle is doing nothing more than giving our leaders the opportunity to just keep pulling away. Yeah, these guys are running, cutting this tribal all the way at the bottom. I mean, I, you know, you see some people who still stay on the actual track, and some people run the apron. Uh, these guys are, you know, still mixing up these lines. Nobody's really, you know, fully committed to the outside line. They're running wherever they can as Eric Wineland jumps out of position there, trying to take over for uh, Michael Stroll there. And he's gonna go ahead. He's gonna get that job done, especially coming out of four. That takes the preferred line away from that top car. And he's gonna get it done, but Brett, or Michael Stroll is right there and waiting to try to also get that move done. 
he's going to have to do a little bit of blocking here if he's wanting to get around. And he does. <laughs> and here comes Mike Kinsley. Mike Kinsley stuffs it on the bottom lane trying to get past uh, Chad. He slides up in front of him with an aggressive block right there off the corner. We're on the back bumper of Michael Stroll. But Brad Slaughter Jr. has also started to drop ever so slightly to where he's not able to try to take that fight up front. But I want to move up to the front as our leaders they're approaching the first lap traffic of the night. And they're closing very quickly of the 41 car of David Mott. Yeah, David Mott, uh, he's, run, he's off the pace right now. His last lap was a 3309. And these guys are running uh, just about 32.9. So he's about two or three tenths off of what the leaders are running right now. So they're catching him at a pretty good rate. Well, and the other major advantage that they have right now is they've got a draft. And they're closing in to the point to where they should, even with the lap times that they were already running, but Alan Elwood has Cameron Hearn closing in ever so slightly to where these two are a two-car pack that aren't going to go anywhere. Yeah, I think these, uh, you know, Cameron Hearn's probably going to work with his teammate, Alan Elwood, and not really try to force the issue, but help push and propel each other, give each other the, uh, you know, the draft and the draft and everything that happens with that. Well, while we're waiting on that, we got to get back here because this group making the fight for third place, there is just tons of entertainment to be had with this group and I do want to bring out Chad has officially dropped back into eighth place he's probably living through one of those situations as he is currently under pressure from Will Roberts who's going to get that move done pretty easily he probably did one of the things that I have done more times than I care to admit to that excited to be up at that front and ran the snot out of his car trying to keep up with those leaders and ultimately burned up his gear and you know it's not even it not might not just be that it could be the wheel settings that he has he's running a different offset or wheel ratio that you know a little bit more aggressive and you know here on this track you don't need to run an aggressive setup you need to run you know instead of a uh, around like a you know 10 to 1 or 12 to 1 you probably want to run a 14 to 14 to 1 or a 16 to 1 ratio here to help conserve these tires so that you know the little bit of the input that you give the wheel uh it, it translate to a little bit on the track not a lot well i want to move up here as apparently my buttons are screwed up here to where i don't want to go to exciting i want to go to our leaders who have made their way up to the lap traffic and it's looking like Alan Elwood is trying to take advantage of a little bit of draft Cameron Hearn goes comes up to follow him and the unfortunate thing is they're probably both going to have to deal with this coming out of the corner and Alan Elwood is clear Cameron Hearn is clear but that's going to throw a very interesting wrench into this battle that we currently have going here, even though Brad Slaughter Jr. has managed to pull away. And Michael Stroll and Eric Wineland have also separated themselves quite nicely from sixth place of Thomas Baresi, who is back but under pressure from Will Roberts right now. Yeah, and then I want to let you guys know the track temperature has dropped down to 78 degrees. We got shadows, you know, the shade coming across uh, turns three and four right now. Turns one and two still a little bit sunny. So, you know, we're seeing a different type of track right now. And these drivers are going to have to start adjusting their uh, driving styles to the ever changing track tonight. And they're adjusting in the ways that any racer would want they're adjusting to it getting faster 
and that's the way I love to see it. But especially with turns one and two being in shade and three and four having sun, it's going to make this asymmetrical track just that much more uh, confusing between each of the turns. And Brad Slaughter Jr. is doing his best to catch up, but he still has almost a second and a half or one point, actually about a 1.6 uh, deficit, but he's on the same straightaway with them. Uh, he sees them in sight. He has a goal, and Eric Weiland's goal is to get to the back bumper of Brad Slaughter Jr. So there's a lot of them who are still battling, and then you go back a little bit further between 7th to 15th, and they're all underneath the blanket there. I was going to say, I'm going to make a quick jump here is unfortunately again we're watching the 25 just continue to drop through the field come under pressure and the only thing i can figure is what you were talking about this is a track that requires a lot of turn in and a very very slow ratio to conserve the tires yeah, you want a minimum input as a, on the wheel that you can to not scrub the speed off the tires. And, you know, you run a little bit more aggressive steering ratio. It, it happens. You're, you're not even knowing that it happens, sadly, too. You're thinking you're running the most smooth, consistent line at a 12 to 1 or a 10 to 1 here. It feels smooth, but the inputs are still way more than what it would be if it was a 14 to 1 or a 16 to 1. So, yeah, and... I personally, unless I am running at a short track, I am always at the slowest ratio possible because we look at this, we have completed, we're on lap 35. We haven't had a caution. So we are definitely gonna be seeing green flag stops right now and you're going to want to make that go as long as you can because these guys, there's no way around it. If they can stretch it out four more laps, they would be able to pretty close to only a two-stop strategy, and you need to be planning for that. Yeah, I'm up here watching the leaders right now. Cameron Hearn's running a total different line than what Alan Elwood is. Uh, Cameron Hearn, uh, now he runs to the, he's running to the top. But the last two turns, he's been running at the bottom. He's been angling it. So I'm wondering if he's trying some stuff out right now to see what will work at the end of the race. If they run, in, run almost all the way out another pit cycle, what can his car do versus Alan Elwood? Or he's doing something that I've done once or twice is he realizes that they're closing in on the pit cycle. So you overheat the tires, doesn't matter. They're about to come off. You kill the tires, doesn't matter. They're about to come off. So take that shorter distance. He's in the draft of Alan Elwood. So what he should be doing is trying to get himself right up on that bumper. So if they come in at the same time, they come out close as we have our first taker we have boomer logan as i yeah, clicked on the wrong one because yes. people <laughs> cycled through but boomer logan is our first taker so i would be the i would be remiss if that is not cameron hearn's plan right now it is close down the gap it doesn't matter if you're gonna kill the tires they're about to become scrap anyway. Yeah, right now, these guys are all running different lanes. I'm watching in the back, and everybody's running way different lanes in the back. Some are still high, some of them are low. Uh, but like you said, we got to try to figure out. We got, we're at 40, coming to lap 40 here. And uh, that means that they, they pit now, it'd be 40, 80, and that's it. So they'd only have one more stop if they pit right now. And so that's why uh, Boomer Logan, I think probably has the right move to get himself up into position because he's gonna have the freshest tires. His best lap is a 31.52, but 
our leader's last lap was a 3309. And we got Norm, he's in the pit road right now. We got our, our second uh, second person right now is out there running. And we're starting to see a whole lot of people making their way down and... Especially the top five, 10. Uh, the top two, top three remain the same, but about four through eight just came in. So Eric Weinland was the leader of this little pack before they all came in. So we'll have to wait and see what ends up happening here as the first one out and back on track. Looks like Aaron, Eric Weinland is going to lead him and he's got quite a gap over Michael Stroll. And that just screams as we are seeing everyone start to make their pit cycles to where 15th is the last car right now that is currently still out on track. And my guess is these guys are gonna work to run it dry because the deeper that they can make it and hold their lead, they're gonna have the freshest tires at the end to make their way back through the pack if they lose anything in this process. Yeah, I mean, they had pretty good gap. I mean, but their, their gap is gonna be taken away after basically one extra lap, maybe two, uh, staying out here for green. So, I mean, you, to make it worth it for what these guys are doing, they're gonna to have to kind of stay out there five, 10 extra laps. So by the time when they come in for a pit cycle, those new tires are worn off from everybody else and they'll be able to drive through the field with their brand new tires. Well, as we're looking and seeing the numbers on pit lane, we're seeing roughly a minute 45, so that's three laps to where even if these guys are slower and somehow, I don't see how, they could make it only on two stops or on one stop, I don't see, I, I, I just do not see the advantage to staying out at this point. I know they would i mean if everybody just pitted right now i mean they got to be somewhere close on the, the end of their fuel cycle they're As not going to be able to do 60. Alan elwood dropped very low which mean tells me he's going in but cameron hearn is staying out my guess is he's going to be able to get one extra lap in on this stint because he had Alan elwood's draft for so long it probably saved him one lap's worth of fuel being able right. to they could have planned that or they could have had uh you know he wanted to go out there and lead a lap for a bonus point well that is also a distinct possibility as he's dropping down right now so both of our leaders have made their way into the pits and that's going to open it up to where once he makes his way around guile brooks is gonna lead a lap and he's staying out for that purpose and he's going to take over the lead, lead himself a lap. But right now, the 81, which is laps down, don't know exactly how many at this point. But he comes out right in front of our leader. Well, the effective leader before the pit cycle. But Cameron Hearn is still in the pits. So we're gonna have to wait and see what happens here is, oh, he gets squirrely getting himself in there. And I'm hoping he was able to get himself slowed down because I know that excitement and probably have sped too many times and. <laughs> oh uh, man, but uh, no, the, these guys, that's what you have to worry about here. We're doing green flag pit stops here. Uh, and you're gonna worry about your own old tires. You ran it almost completely dry on a full pit cycle here. What's your tires looking like? Did you practice this? Your tires and brakes work 100% differently under these worn conditions versus your stop and go practices with almost fresh tires. As we see Joe Dinsmore who led that last lap lock it up coming into the pits and hopefully he got slowed down, but that gives Justin Morton 
the lead, if only momentarily, but we are starting to see once Justin makes his way around, that is going to go, and our effective leader is second place right now of Eric Weinlin. And Justin Morton is managing to keep it out for one more lap. But once he makes his way in, that's going to give the lead to Eric Weinlin with Thomas Baresi behind him, but by three seconds, as Blake Gordon is not sitting around and waiting for him on those old tires. He wants to take advantage of every second he can get back while we do this, but Thomas Baresi, who's running in third for the time being as Justin Morton does make the dive into the pits. That's going to give Eric Weinland the lead, but Thomas Baresi, who's almost three and a half seconds back, is under pressure from Bl Brad Slaughter Jr. And these guys, Brad Slaughter jumps down to that low line, hoping to get just a little bit extra. Hugs the low line through one and two, and he's going to be able to pull himself all the way back up there, stop any kind of a run that Thomas Baresi may have, and he's going to take over second place, but right now Michael Stroll is also looking to and then right behind, join that right party. Behind, right behind him, you got Alan Elwood coming up, right uh, trying to pass them now and Cameron Hearn sitting about two seconds back from this pack so this is where you know the leaders that stayed out there for uh, another five six laps compared to these guys this is where they stack up they're pretty far back he's Alan Elwood's over, over three seconds back from these guys but he's got about five laps newer tires so he should be able to you know continue driving through here but it just got to make sure he doesn't burn up his equipment trying to get through the traffic he hasn't done the had to happen all night long so far well and it's funny that you say it was exactly five laps it's like you were counting or something i was guesstimating <laughs> <laughs> but right now eric weinland who is our leader is on 12 lap old tires he's up 11 places to be the leader here but alan elwood is getting around Thomas Baresi, who does have those five lap older of tires. And he's just wanting to make his way through and get himself back up to that lead. And as the pace he's running right now, that shouldn't be an issue. He's almost a second faster than Eric Weinland was on that last lap. Yeah, Alan Elwood's now, you know, he's been running in the top line almost the whole entire race, but now he's going to have to drop down and go to that bottom line uh, to start making his moves around the rest of the pack. He's already made it up the third. He's right on the heels of Brad Slaughter Jr., who's sitting in the second, who, who only has two lap older uh, tires compared to Alan Elwood, but he's trying to get by him and quick, fast, in a hurry. Well, and the advantage that he's going to have with staying out as long as he did, even if he pits with these guys the same time the next time, because he is going to burn up his tires a little bit as they come up to lap traffic. And that's a 55, Norm Pelliak. And this is... That's splitting these guys. <laughs> And these guys are awesome. I love watching these guys, the amount of confidence they have. They're running around with everybody, and they'll be able to put their cars wherever they want and however they want, and it, it, everybody is able to drive around them, and it's real nice to be able to see this type of action in a league. Well, and that's a big thing as we see Brad Slaughter Jr. tag the wall coming out of four, and that's going to drop him back. And that's actually going to eliminate some of the draft that he current he had on Alan Elwood. And I have a feeling that that was part of what was keeping him with him. Yeah, I mean, right now he's been flirting with the wall almost uh, quite a bit all night long. He's running that high line or he runs that bottom line that slingshots him to the outside wall. 
and that safer barrier sticks out just enough where it can be a factor uh compared to when this track used to didn't have the safer barriers you still had you had the extra three four foot that you could run well nascar is better for having the safer barrier oh it is but, but it, I, I i hate that it it took away the driving lane i wish they could have backed the wall up five feet and made the safer barrier that way with instead of taking uh some of this valuable racing surface away well some of the newer tracks like we're about to see atlanta get redone and cameron hearn just went off track i, I will take a look at it so you i was gonna <laughs> say let's oh he, he smacks the oh, wall that's the wall and, and oh. he starts cutting the grass oh that's uh that's hard to see considering he definitely was running to be a favorite but right now we're just seeing alan elwood has caught eric wineland and he was four tenths of a second faster on that last lap so i mean I you're gonna to have to run his line and block him. I mean, that's the only way you're gonna do it. But Alan Elwood has just so much momentum going on the back straight away. There's no way to try to block his entry in a turn three. And he's gonna get the job done to retake the lead. Now the question will be, can he go another 45 laps on these tires after having just essentially abused them? to get himself back up into the lead as we're quickly approaching half race distance. I'm hoping to see if there actually is any kind of an issue. And I gotta jump back here because I keep seeing positions change and there's Cameron Hearn and Blake Gordon battling for seventh position. And Blake Gordon, he's got a clean car and well now he's not got a clean car but definitely Cameron Hearn's car is showing a whole lot of damage from that run in with the wall and that's to be expected especially considering how hard he hit it to send him into the infield yeah I mean He's driving as hard as he can, running the outside line, and sometimes it can come back to bite you, and that's kind of what happened with him. He flirted with disaster, and uh, it bit him. So, uh, you know, he's going to have to bounce back. Uh, hope for a caution somewhat so he can repair some of that damage because this track is very aero-dependent. You don't need any type of damage here uh, to try and slow your car. But I'm also going to make a quick jump farther back into the battle for 18th place where we're seeing Brandon Bernhardt's that lead car, Sean Carmody, Danny Ware, and Casey Shue. These guys are running side by side and it must be a lapped car that's back there, but Sean Carmody is not giving up that low line. He wants to get himself up into that 19th position. I tell you what, I, I really like Brandon Bernhardt's paint scheme. Well. It says Beat Crunch Barbecue. I love the, the matted blue and uh, red there. Uh, it's a very, very nice look done car. And I'll admit, I don't know what Meat Crunch Barbecue is. I don't know what it I is, but want it. To, I want it right <laughs> now. I love me some good barbecue and well, I have some good joints around my house. Nothing beats when I used to go visit Dallas one, well, twice a year and be able to get that proper Texas barbecue. Uh, North Carolina barbecue is where it's at. If you want barbecue. Eh. Eh. Meh. Nah. Schmantics. Oh, Alan Elwood though, he's out there. He's already built up almost a one and a half second lead. So that kind of answers your question right now. He's uh, he's out there pulling away. His last lap was two tenths over, uh, still faster than Eric Wineland, and an another two tenths faster than uh, Brad Slaughter Jr. So uh, he's out there running the fastest laps of the race right now and compared to everybody else on the track. 
And okay, so yeah, he didn't exactly burn through his tires. He's just showing everyone that he was just the class of the field tonight. Yeah, the only person that's really keeping pace with him right now, looking through all the lap times, is uh, Gael Brooks and Randy Bachel. They're a little bit further back in ninth and uh, 12th, but they're running by the same lap times. Even Justin Morton, but I think Justin Morton pitted well afterwards. So yeah, he's going to have a lot fresher tires. He's got five laps newer, so it explains why he's running a 32.69 versus the leader's lap time was a 32.8. Well, and Kyle Brooks right now is our hard charger of the night, and he is currently up 16 positions. But really, the person that's turning those positions into a great race finish is Eric Wineland, who is up 10 positions over his start. Yeah, I mean, that, coming up 16 spots here at Kansas is real, is a great uh, feat of its own, especially when you're already in the top 10 here. He's sitting, he's sitting in ninth. So it's good to see that, you know, people were able to make up these type of spots. And I think he did it based off of his pitch strategy, standing out there a lot longer. He was able to run faster laps now while everybody else's pace is off. Well, and with a very few, with very few exceptions, he was the latest pitter. He didn't pit until lap 50. So he's only running 20 lap old tires as opposed to a lot of the field, which at least 10 laps older yeah the, some of these people are already 30 a little over 30 percent or 70 percent away to this uh fuel run here whereas he's just you know barely as a 50 percent so i mean he still has a lot of life left on those tires uh, a little bit of extra fuel in there to make it you know feel a little bit better in there so he's able to run a little bit quicker but right now as we talk about guile brooks We've got a little bit of a pack forming here, starting with Cameron Hearn, who has Blake Gordon right now, currently fighting him and getting himself down below, but not able to completely get the job done because again, that high line carries so much more speed and you're scrubbing speed off trying to hold the low line. Yeah, I'm looking back there. You got Calvin Flarsky and that. I I just think it was a Joker car, that number two. He's a lap down, uh, but he's right there in that pack as well. Well, and but he is a lap down as Kyle Brooks is looking to make a move on Blake Gordon with those fresher tires, and it's only a three lap difference between the two of them. Yeah, I mean, he's using, you know, a little bit grippier tires and that draft to be able to try and pull up to Blake Gordon's back bumper and put a move on him. So you see him right now diving low right there to the tri-oval, trying to cut the distance there, use the extra speed that he had coming off the corner to try and clear him. He couldn't do it in turn one, so he'll go down low again, try to cut it off before Blake gets that good run out of turn two. As they're getting close right there, and I want to jump in and take a quick look at what it looks like from inside of Blake Gordon's car right here as he keeps seeing that number 71 on his left side and trying to keep that extra speed to where laying off the throttle ever so slightly and seemingly right back on it. He's but doing Gile. what he can to keep, keep that th foot and the throttle come off the corner. Uh, keep Gael from being able to slide up and taking that momentum away. But right now, Blake Gordon, he's doing exactly what I would be thinking about doing, and that's trying to get a little bit extra of a launch by cutting down to the low section of that track and get the best run he can on that long front stretch as Blake is doing everything he can to be full throttle well before that turn. And he's closing the gap slightly, running the line that he's running right now. 
Yeah, so, I mean, that, that puts Guy Old Brooks up another two spots right now. Last time we talked about him, he was a ninth. Now he's in seventh. Now he's trying to chase down Will Roberts, who's about a, almost a second ahead of him. But I wanted to jump up to the front here as Thomas Baresi has Michael Stroll right there on his bumper as, uh, of course, he blinks out when <laughs> I say that. But he's right there. He is wanting to pounce as soon as he can, waiting for any kind of a hiccup from Brad Slaughter Jr., but it doesn't seem like it's going to come. Yeah. I moved back to uh, Tyler Hensley, was... Randy Bachel, and Hayden Pastoris. Man, he's, he's a good three-car battle here. The 39 of Randy Bachel's on the bottom. Uh, trying to make up any and all spots there, trying to do it. He slides up in front of Hayden Spetsaurus. So these guys are fighting right now. These guys all, you know, I think uh, Randy's got the, the newest set of tires for almost five laps on these guys. So he's trying to drive through these guys and get away from them. As, he... As we saw Hayden Pastoris coming onto the pit road. We, I mean, we are past the halfway point and we have seen 40 laps worth of tires. Honestly, oh, I mean, he's going to be saw good. People, we saw people do 50, almost 50 laps or a little over 50 laps there on the first stint. So Hayden Pastoris will be able to get to the end here. Uh, he's just going to he's gonna get a momentary uh, speed from the gods with these four fresh set of tires. But at the end of this run, he's going to be the slowest man out there. But... There's also the chance of that mythical yellow flag tonight as we're moving forward to watch Thomas Baresi try to get around Brad Slaughter Jr. And it looks like he had to lay off a little too hard, but no, he's going into the pits. So he is going to go ahead, get himself those fresh tires, but I have a feeling that our leader, Alan Elwood, with how quickly he moved through the pack already, he's going to run it dry again to where he's going to have I, roughly 20 laps to get himself back up to the front. It's already worked once. Yeah, I think he's probably going to come around about 85, 88 laps uh, in the race. I think that's when he's going to come in, give him really good balance for the last shootout here. We got Eric Wineland. He's already in. Brad, Brad Slaughter Jr. follows him into the pit road. That moves Michael Stroll, Will Roberts up to a second and third. Guyle Brooks moves with a fourth, which is a plus 21 in his book. For the time being, it is. But right now, these guys... Honestly, I still think that we're not going to see Allen come in until lap 90 at the earliest. Because the more laps that he can take out of these guys, he's... He, already had a massive lead why not just keep with the strategy make it to where they're fresh at the end to where when people are getting a little bit desperate to hold on to positions he's got the freshest tires by 20 laps he's going to be able to make moves and get out of the way of any shenanigans that may happen in front of him yeah, and everybody's going to wonder, like, you know, you're coming in for your last pit stop here uh, attentively. Uh, don't speed. We had about three to four people speed, uh, sped on the first pit stop. Don't be that guy. Don't give up your track position and speed into the pits. I wish I could say I didn't know what you were talking about. <laughs> oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. You next tried killing me. <laughs> next time, I'm just going to give you the tip to slow myself down. I was at I was at speed limit and you were still coming at me and like a oh, fierce man. Uh, I don't want to hear it. I look at my mirror and I'm like, oh, crap, I sped up. So uh, <laughs> so you wouldn't hit me. Yeah. And the reason why I ended up not or ended up speeding was because not everyone grandma's it into the pits and I had to I, lock I, up and you, you can't. There's a reason why cars have anti lock brakes. It's because you're faster when they don't lock up or you stop faster when you don't lock up. Oh, I was well past the line when you almost destroyed my back end. So I don't want to hear it. You should have been slowed down to that wonderful pit road speed well before then. I know. And I probably would have beat you if 
I wouldn't have done that, or at least given you a fight. But oh. I digress. I'll see you out at Mid Ohio. You won't on see Wednesday. me. Oh, I... can't go to a track that I know I can beat you at. Yes, exactly. All right, we got Blake Gordon pits in from the third spot here. That leaves us one, two, three, four, five, five, six Alan people. Alan Elwood has divin in, dove into the pits. Yeah, that's what I said. Ball lap eighty five, eighty seven. All right, you were right. I will admit when I'm wrong, even though I'm glad I didn't almost throw money on it like I was thinking about. But that <laughs> that gives Michael Stroll the lead. And he has not been in since lap 40. So, and right now, this is the part that's actually kind of throwing me off is the fact that Alan Elwood had enough of a lead that he is currently sitting still in his pit box and is just now starting to drop out. And he's only in fifth place right now. And sixth, right, as I say that, is Michael Stroll dives into the pits yeah i mean yeah well, let's see uh there's still quite a few people we got uh zach edwards cameron hearn looks like he got caught with a pit road penalty because he sat in there for a minute 46 uh zach edwards uh done his second stop he's in there for a minute 22 so so far we got two people caught on this one for some type of sp uh, pit road speeding penalties as it, it's a very difficult track to do that or to get slowed down because you don't want to give up any pace it's a fast intermediate and yeah these guys it's just one of those things that it's going to get everybody at some point or another so we want to talk about it we talk about the the track changing we're on a third set of tires this is the third time these guys have went at it uh we have a total different track there's no sun anywhere on these tracks the sun has basically set over the hills here and the track is going to get more grippy for these guys for this last uh we got what less than 30 lap shootout now 29 as yeah we are 28 laps right now as travis mcquiston was our leader for a short while and right now eric wineland has inherited the lead and the question will become with five lap older tires than eric wineland who is only about six seconds behind him will he be able to hold on to it yeah i, I I don't know, Alan Elwood was able to cut the time off last time and then he was able to distance himself on five, uh, with five lap uh, newer tires on Eric Wineland. And, you know, something dramatically is gonna have to change for Eric uh, to be able to hold him off on this, uh, we're, we're down to what, 27, almost 27 laps here. And that's the big thing. We are at 27 laps. And Alan Elwood just set the fastest lap of the race with a 31-1-6. As he's chasing down Thomas Baresi. And, and uh, I, I mean, Eric, give it. Eric, Wine, uh, Eric Wineland ran a 31-80. Alan Elwood ran a 31-1-9. So he's running six tenths of a lap faster than laps here. So, uh, yeah, Alan Elwood's going to catch him. And, yeah, that's... It, it's just going to turn into... Can Eric Wineland hold him off as he's got four and a half seconds of a gap? Is he going to be able to hold on to that for 26 laps? I don't think it's going to be possible. No. No. We still uh, still got showing a few people out there have not pitted. Uh, they're mainly the lap down cars. You got Kyle Flarsky's only pitted once. Kyle Cooper's only pitted once. And Danny Ware's only pitted once out there. But the, my guess is, is that's it's always going to be strategic. Kyle Cooper's in the pit road now. 
So they're they're you know they're a lap down. They're hoping to stay out there as long as possible. I uh, hope for a yellow. But uh, you, so far, no yellows have dropped tonight. We've been a green flag for the last. Uh, it just went away. So about 95 laps. Well, as we have a little bit of a lull in our action at the front, let's take a moment to hear from our sponsor for, of the Hard Charger Award, Rhino. <laughs> And in that time frame, Alan Elwood has closed down to the gap to nearly two seconds. And we got 22 laps to go. Uh, this past lap, Alan Elwood's about a second, just, or uh, it's not a second, but a tenth faster on him. So let's see, as they come across the line here, Eric Weinland crosses. Let's see, uh, where do they sit? It's only a about eh, half a second of a yeah. difference right now and oh these things are not labeled well but yeah he has been closing that gap steadily oh eric wineland's hard into the wall he smacked the wall come out of turn four lifted the whole entire front end off of it and is able to keep going, but he's got some heavy damage to that front right after that. It doesn't look all that terrible, but that doesn't mean that the suspension doesn't have, it's not a little bit off, but right now it's only a half a second and Alan Elwood is, I give it one lap. By the time we hit 19 to, or uh, 18 to go, he's gonna be around and he may prove me wrong and <laughs> have it done before we get to 19 left. And right now, Alan Elwood has taken over the lead. Yeah. Eric Wineland's car slapped the wall and climbed the fence and then slammed back down to the ground. And unfortunately, it'd be like that is one of those things that as a driver, he's going to be just. Okay, we've heard of people throwing water bottles. We've heard of people breaking their wheel stands, wheels <laughs> falling off. But the biggest thing I want to talk about really quickly right now is Alan Elwood is just pulling away from Eric Wineland. We have 13 cars on the lead lap right now. We're closing in on the possibility that only one third of the pack is going to be on the lead lap by the time we're done tonight. And the person that's in 13th spot is Chad. He started out with the, the strongest run up front. He was running in top three in that first segment and then just fell like a rock about halfway through. And uh, he's sitting the last one on the lead lap right now. It's about... Uh, about 27 seconds back from the leader so uh he's only about a straight away or so back from being a a lap down well and i'm wondering if possibly there was a wall brush that we missed that may have put a little bit of a camber issue on the front end of his car that has just been scrubbing speed off ever since yeah, i mean it, Sometimes these cars are, you know, you barely tap the wall and you, you feel like you did nothing wrong and your car drives like crap. 
And sometimes you see like somebody slap the wall like Eric Wineland does, and he still has speed like crazy. So, you know, it, it's hit or miss here. <laughs> so I want to jump back here because right now the action on track, we've got Kyle Brooks, Blake Gordon, and Hayden Pistorius, who seems to be dropping ever so slightly from these guys. This is the battle for seventh place right now, and they are just waiting. I mean, you got to think how Hayden Pastoris was the first one on pit road at lap 77, where the guys in photo are, you know, Blake Gordon at 84, Gail Brooks at 83, Will Roberts is at 81. So everybody around them has a lot fresher tires than everybody else. I just look back there. Chad pitted on lap 67. Like he went in super early. Uh, there's, yeah, he, the only thing I could figure in that situation is he was looking to get the best laps out of the tires as Blake Gordon is making a move around Kyle Brooks on that top line. And he should have it after this turn. You know, you got the number three of Will Roberts dropping down to the bottom, helping the 71 catch a little bit of draft through the center of the corner, though. So, I mean, that's helping the 71 and hurting Blake Gordon. Well, but he is clear as they come through the trioval, and Blake now is going to set his sights on Will Roberts, where he's only got about two tenths of a second over Blake, and Blake has a draft and the speed and holding that top line right now he is gonna have a great run coming out of four and he's only it seems like he's only dropping down that far to keep himself in the draft because he's almost immediately back up to where he's normally entering the corner and trying to retain as much speed as he can to maybe get the job done here is he's got a great run if he holds that top line has a the perfect entry I he mean, should he be able to saw, have that job done going into saw one Will Roberts right there he uh he's moving down out of the way kind of letting uh Blake Gordon get the runs that he's getting off the corner he could have ran that top line going into turn three there stop Blake from having it but he, was, he dropped down about three quarters way down the back straight away to let Blake have that uh, run that he had. So Will Roberts is out there showing some really good uh, sportsmanship with him. But he is he's going to end up relinquishing that position soon enough as we only have 10 laps to go. Blake gets himself down in front of Will Roberts and Will will end up following his line He's sticking to that low line, hoping that it's going to yield some dividends. But Blake has that top line figured out. He has the extra speed. And even with Will being in the draft, he's still pulling away ever so slightly. Yeah, Will drops down pretty far in the center of the corner. Looks like he picks up so much momentum. But then he, he can't just get the drive off that Blake gets on the outside there. And Blake's by the end of the... Uh, straight away there is able to clear him once again but these guys it looks like they're going to keep switching back and forth maybe Blake is having to lay off that throttle a little bit longer than he's wanting to to keep it out of that wall but it looks like Will has that but I got to go back up here as Thomas Baresi actually gets the pass done on Eric Weinland and we're going to actually jump to the replay of that just gets a great run out of two on the back stretch has that low line doesn't go all the way down to where he can hold speed and ultimately just gets the pass done coming into the front stretch and using the number 93 of Travis McQuiston to keep Eric from getting all the way down so we'll head back live here these guys are running every line possible, trying to make any and all tents up. I mean, these guys are doing what they can. 
And it's awesome to see all the great action all night long throughout the field. It doesn't matter where they're at, what position they're at. These guys are giving them their all, trying to fight for that extra spot. But with only seven laps to go, now's the time to be doing it as Thomas Baresi is using that car in front of him to get a good draft, get himself back up to his preferred line, and ultimately just pull away from Eric Wineland, who is now coming under pressure. Well, there's Brandon Bernhardt in the meat crunch car, but we can actually see Michael Stroll is right there looking to get himself up into that last podium position. But he's only got five laps to do it, and that's going to be a tall order. Yeah, and right now they're they're fighting, and then you know Eric Wineland has a little bit of a damaged car there, and it looks like Michael Stroll's getting a heck of a run behind him. Drops down low in, in between three and four. He's going to try and do a slide job coming out of four. Was not fully cleared. He's going to fight back on the outside. Brendan Bernhardt's kind of giving a push behind. Michael Stroll barely cleared him coming through the trioval and will jump up in front of him going into turn one. But right now, Eric Wineland, that is definitely, even in that draft, he's just dropping back. So Michael Stroll is going to pull away and try to hang on to that third position as long as he can. But we've got three laps to go. It's all out running because Michael Stroll and Eric Wineland, these guys... They have no hope of catching Thomas Baresi right now. He's a second clear of them. Alan Elwood, our leader, he's five seconds clear of second place. So and I want to. I want to see if Michael Stroll can catch up to Thomas Baresi or shrink the gap. He's got seven laps, newer tires. So I mean, they're he's about one seconds back, and uh, he's got some traffic in front of him. But I'd love to see if he can kind of cut it down with two two laps to go here but the gap is pretty much stabilizing around one second. And from the beginning, Alan Elwood takes the pole. He ends up staying out longer than everyone else. Well, not everyone, but the rest of most, the leaders. And as he takes the white flag, this was his race start to finish. Yeah, it's sad to see Cameron Hearn smack the wall and couldn't come back up to the field to see, you know, show what his car could do. So, you know, Michael, uh, Alan Elwood, though, has uh, been the man all night long. Uh, every pit cycle was able to work his way back through traffic and get back up to the front and dominate this race. As he comes out of turn four, Alan Elwood is going to take the win tonight at Kansas with Thomas Baresi crossing in second. Michael Stroll not far behind him taking the final podium spot tonight. But this was definitely a great race. Kansas always provides us with great racing and Alan Elwood, hat off to him. He is just, he has this track mastered. No way around that. Yep, Alan Elwood was the man to beat tonight. Many people attempted it. They tried different strategies. They tried to pit different cycles than this guy, ran different lines, but Alan Elwood mastered it, and he came home victorious tonight as he burns it out. All right, so let's take a quick run through our results. And I don't know why this keeps going back to that. But oh. all right, we have our winner tonight is Alan Elwood. Thomas Baresi comes in second. Michael Stroll third. Eric Wineland in fourth. Brad Slaughter Jr. in fifth. Blake Gordon sixth. 
Randy Bechtel in seventh. Eighth is Kyle Brooks. Ninth is Will Roberts. And tenth is Hayden Pistorius. Eleventh is Tyler Hensley. Coming home twelfth is Justin Morton. Thirteenth is Travis McQuistian. Fourteenth uh, is John Gervon. 15th is Brandon Bernhardt. 16th is Boomer Logan. 17th is Sean Carmody. Uh, 18th is Casey Shue. 19th is Joe Densmore. And rounding out the top 20 is Tyler Dugler. And then 21st is Norm Peltier. And 22nd is Chad. God, I'm Chad. asking him how it's to Chad. pronounce it. And 23rd is Brian Keita. 24th is Kyle Cooper. 25th is Cal Filarski. 26th is Zach Edwards. Cameron Hearn in 27th. Danny Ware in 28th. And rounding out the field is David Mott Jr. So, all right. Let's go ahead and bring up our winner. As I lost him. If you can find him first. I actually. I got him. Oh. He's at the bottom. Hey, Alan, that's uh, Adam and Josh in the booth. You get a copy? I got you guys. All right. You're becoming a weekly regular up here, man. Uh, congratulations on the win. How, how did you feel about tonight's race? Um, for Kansas, I think it went really well. Uh, I was actually really shocked that it went caution free. Um, because we, you know, you guys know this track is notorious for being one groove and lo and behold, the bottom line actually had some speed. Um, I'm not really sure what was all going around on the track as far as passing goes, but like you could actually run down there get your, get your wheels on the white line and actually make some speed. So that was, that was awesome to be able to have some sort of extra groove to be able to run around here. Cause otherwise it's, it gets pretty boring. It, it was definitely a line that we saw some people running all night, still running fast to where I'll admit, I'm just as amazed as you that, you can normally make one, two laps down there before you have to move back up to the top groove, but we were seeing people run down there all night. Yeah, and, and you would only expect that with the cup car, being that it has the, the extra downforce and, and lower horsepower that, to make that work, but this car actually surprised me um, quite a bit tonight with, with the flexibility that it had to be able to run in both grooves. So, I mean, that's that's awesome that they, they were able to, to finally make some sort of change to get that to work. And uh, it, it made for an awesome race. I mean, you know, again, we went caution-free. That's that's amazing. Honestly, so, so I'm going to call it as being the new update that they did with the suspension. And I've seen it wreak havoc in the past week. But at the same time, tonight, it looked fantastic. Yeah, the, the car really, for a fixed setup, the car drove really well, I thought, tonight. Um, looser than I think a lot of us probably anticipated. Some people were fighting tight, I know, on our team. But for me, it was all about that right rear actually hanging out, you know, on both ends of the track and, and trying to make it time that way, trying to be aggressive with the throttle to get the car to keep turning. And that's where really where I thought I made my speed from apex off was just – you know, as soon as you let off early, get into the center of the corner, get back on the throttle hard, and, and just, you know, keep it wound up. And that's that's where it felt like it made the most time. So, so what do you feel that you were doing differently than everybody else? Because, I mean, uh, you were putting on a the clinic there, man. Yeah, I'll be honest. Uh, if Cameron didn't have his bad luck, Cameron very well could have came away with the trophy tonight. Um, I felt like he had maybe just that little bit more raw speed than I had, which is typical. It seems like, um, he just has that, that thing hooked up and knows how to, to get the most out of it every single lap. And, uh, you know, I caught a break there with him uh, catching the wall, but, um, I don't know, you know, maybe it was backing up the corners a little bit more. And, and like I said, getting on the throttle earlier to be able to carry that momentum through some people might not have been as, uh, hard on the throttle in the center of the corner because you really had to get that thing rotated with the throttle to be able to make that uh, that exit speed possible. So, you know, maybe, maybe it was apex off. That's 
you know, maybe where I where I get all my speed from. <laughs> I mean, honestly, there was no one out there to match your speed to where first lap after that last pit stop, you set the fastest lap of the race with a 31, I think, 31.15 if I remember correctly and it cooled down but no one else was even approaching that tonight yeah I mean I thought that Eric had a really good strategy um, on his pit cycle uh, he actually built up quite a big lead on me I mean I know that you know every lap is critical on these tires but he had a sizable lead and if he didn't hit the wall there he could have easily came home with second. I mean, he, he had everybody else gapped that far. And, uh, you know, I think it's that's partly why I ran that fast lap was I was just trying to catch up as quick as I could because I know that tires do equal out, and I didn't want to be caught pitting too late and then not having the speed to actually catch back up. I got you, man. Well, you did what you had to do. You made the right calls all night long. You stayed out there a little bit longer than the, most of the rest of the lead pack guys did. Uh, was able to cycle back out and uh, lead the most laps tonight. So, man, congratulations. Thank you. Um, give a big shout out to my guys tonight, uh, VRA. Um, really, really good showing by the team tonight. I think we we had the most speed out of any team out here uh, this evening and and uh you know the results might not show that for a couple guys but you know kudos to everybody i thought everybody had really good pace tonight and uh you know i'm but i'm excited for a week off regroup uh even though i got a win you know good to have a week off uh and get ready for probably could be the toughest challenge that we see at red, red bull ring it's it's going to be difficult i still personally believe that these cars are well suited for that especially in comparison to coda but that may yeah, just be it's difficult to see bring but we'll see <laughs> <laughs> right, man. hey man uh, go go enjoy your win with your team man and have a great night appreciate it guys thank you all right that was your race winner and pole sitter alan elwood let's bring up our second place well Wonderful, Thomas Bressy. Hey, Thomas, is uh, Adam and Josh Nabuthi got a copy? Yeah, I got you guys. What's up? Hey, man, uh, how were you able to keep up speed all night long? Uh, it was honestly, I think it was just the pit strategy and stuff. It was it was hard to pass there and uh, just kind of blew it in qualifying, and which you know I haven't been really great at qualifying for a while, anyways. So um, I kind of got backed up a little bit that f the first like 20 ish laps or so and then i kind of was able to make a little bit of ground and then just try to work in the pit cycle as best i could and try to take care of the tires and stuff like that so um it was a little trickier the first run the second run like i was kind of able to have some clean air uh just from where i cycled out of the pits and just kind of was able to kind of read what some other people were doing like i knew stroll kind of saved his stuff a little bit earlier in the uh in that second run and I, Brad, I guess, I don't know if he burned his tires off or what happened or if he pitted earlier. I wasn't totally paying attention, but um, I was. I noticed I was a little better than he was at the end of that uh, that second run. So just um, it kind of worked out. I was able to have a little bit of a shorter, shorter stint on that last run. I think a lot of people were kind of in that boat anyways. Just a lot of people went a lot further. I tried to keep it more towards even thirds, but um, just kind of be able to just kind of keep my head down that last run and, you know, work my way through there and got to Eric. I wasn't actually sure I was even going to get to him, but um, and I thought Stroll was going to get me there at the end and he kind of, I think maybe stalled out in the traffic a little bit, but just tried to be consistent, kept the, you know, kept the car out of the wall, which, you know, was, was important. So, um, you know, not a great night, I guess, but I mean, certainly not upset about P2 considering where, where I started and how tricky it seemed to be to pass. Yeah, but the one thing I will tell you, those P2s add up. Yeah, they do. It's kind of, it's it's funny. It's just like, I feel like I keep adding up second to, to different people. But hey, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's good to at least have a decent average finish and stuff. So um, I'm not sure I might end up with the points lead after this week. I don't really know. But, um, you know, I'm certainly, certainly not disappointed, but obviously would have been 
like or like to have been a spot better. I just I didn't have enough for those guys and you know got way way on the back foot there at the start from from where I qualified. But those guys up front you know drove a good race. So congrats to Allen. Um, Cameron probably would have been ahead of me, but he smacked the wall. I think well he did it once in front of me, and then I think I think my teammate said he he hit the wall a couple laps later, ten laps later, or whatever on the back stretch. So um, that sucks, but it happens. So we'll uh, you know we'll keep going. Well and. You you referenced taking over first in the points. The points have been updated, and you, sir, have taken over. Oh, well, that's good. So, I mean, obviously that helps as well. You know, if if I can hang on to that, um, you know, that, that obviously helps when we get to the fuel finals in terms of, you know, the the seed, you know, how, how that kind of the points get divvied up there. So that's important. But, you know, at the same time, I can't just get too complacent with it because I know that there's guys, you know, like, it seems like Alan kind of, like, I feel like last year he was okay at the start of the year and then it took him a handful of races and then he kind of flipped a switch and like was kind of really turned it up. So, it, you know, once he, once he gets one win, he's usually, you know, he's a little bit more on his game. So I'm, I'm sure he's not done yet. And I think he's got, I don't know exactly where he is in the points, but he's, he's probably going to start chipping away at things as well. I'm sure. No. Yeah, man. Hey, you, you ran a great race all night long. And like you said, consistency pays off, you know, you know, it's not first place where everybody wants to be, but throughout the season, you're putting yourself in the spots where you have to be in, uh, to be there at the end, because, uh, you know, this race does not win the championship. It's a whole entire season that gets you to the spot where you can win the championship. So that's what you're doing right now, putting together some great races. Yeah, and I mean, that's kind of how it was last year, too. I mean, I only had the one win at Talladega, but, you know, at the end of the year, I had a bunch of bunch of P2, you know, results that I think kind of helped and combined with some other factors as well, obviously. But um, I try to just, you know, be as consistent as I can be because, I mean, yeah, I, you know, consistency is key, whether you're, you know, you're putting top fives together or you're just out there absolutely smoking everybody winning races or whatever, um, you, you know, you just have to do the best you can every week. And I felt like I've done an all right job of that. Um, I still look back at like Homestead probably is one where I was kind of not really where I needed to be. Um, but I think ever since then it's gone a little bit better. Pocono probably uh, the outlier there, at least the last lap there, but you know, that happens sometimes it's all right. So. No, it was a great run. Happy to chat with you again this week, but no, congrats on taking over first in the points, and enjoy the week off. Thank you, guys. We'll uh, see you in two weeks. All righty. And then last but not finally, Michael Stroll comes home third. Hey, Michael, it's uh, Adam and Josh in the booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I'm here, guys. What's going on? Hey man, uh, you did a great run. You're, you know, we're able to save your stuff and save your equipment and bring yourself back up to a P3 tonight. You beat up here and get that wonderful podium position so you can come talk to me and Josh. So, how was the race? Uh, yeah, it's been a couple weeks since I talked to you guys. Uh, the race, um, I had felt like it would go green, like it did. Um, kind of strategized that, you know, plan around that. So I, you know, I probably should have stayed out a little bit longer. Uh, like the five and the fifteen did on that um on that first run, and it cost me a little bit of time. So on the second run, I stretched out a little longer and uh, sacrificed some time. Uh, was able to get uh, halfway points and was able to get a uh, lap or two lead, so I got some bonus points there. And I sacrificed some time, but um, I was able to you know get up further than where I was. So you know I ran around fifth, fifth and fourth all night and up third. So I can't get playing good points tonight. Um. Kind of need that to be kind of crawling back since the action at USA. Um, but I feel like I should solidly make the playoffs here or the finals, rather. I, I mean, know. you could call it crawling back, but you jumped up three positions tonight to where you're currently in sixth. And then in the standings, I have not looked at that. Yes, about? The, yes. Wow. It... Well, go me. I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that it's. It's all about the consistency to where you can have that one bad race and still jump your way back up. It's looking at everyone that's in front of you. It's the consistent top fives that have been 
that are essentially holding you back right now, but you are only 28 points out of first right now. Yeah, it's kind of about where I've always been in fuel, you know, like top five somewhere, 30 points back somehow, whatever. Um, I'm as, as surprising as it is, I'm still looking for my first win in the, in the, in the premier series. I, I feel like I've done everything I could. So one day it'll come. Um, Alan had the field covered tonight. I just couldn't run the top as fast as everybody else. But once the tires equaled out, I felt like, you know, I had good top five pace. and That's what I did. No, it was a great run from you tonight. Great to see you actually get the finish that really seems to fit where you're running on a day-to-day -day basis. Just managed to stay out of everyone else's issues, and we didn't have any real issues tonight. No, I mean, everyone did a good job. I think we had like 30 guys or maybe just shy of that. But to get that kind of field and uh run caution free anywhere is, is a good win for the league it looks good for us you know the talent runs deep here i feel like and everyone did a really good job tonight because it was not easy to drive you know one little mistake you get in the wall and it's like wall glue and then after a while it would be loose you know off the corners you know i didn't see too many guys you know lose control or you know you know with the tire difference on green flag stops you know kind of run into problems there we didn't have any. Everyone did nice and nice. Everyone did a nice job. Proud of the league. Proud of myself. Proud of my team. Had two guys in my team in the top ten. Should be good for the team championship because I think the worst we had was fifteenth. So pretty good day overall. Can't complain. No, great right. run. Great to chat with you and looking forward to a week off to rest the voice box. But then we get to come back to the Red Bull ring, which. Oh, it's going to be a delight. Yeah, I have um, I'll probably take two weeks to, uh, to practice there because I don't think it's a difficult course, but I don't, I don't know it. And I'm not that great at road courses to begin with. So um, I'm sure I'll get together with my team over here at DIR and, you know, turn some laps. And anytime I go to road course, you know, you have your favorites. And I just hope for a top 10 and just kind of get through it unscathed. See what happens. I got you, man. Hey, uh, thanks for putting on a hell of a race for us tonight. You put up some action all throughout the track, came home third, and a uh, great points night for you. So we wish you luck next, uh, not next Monday, but the Monday after that, the Red Bull Ring. Yep. Thanks, guys. See you around. Have a good one. Thank you. All righty. Well, that's going to do it from us tonight here in the Fuel Racing League. Uh, join us tomorrow night, IVRL, as we go to Bristol Motor Speedway. It's our last race of the round of 12. We'll drop it down, or no, it's the ra last race of round of 16. We'll drop it down to a uh, field of 12. So we'll find out who makes it through tomorrow night. And then Wednesday, we get to go to Josh Laston's favorite track in the whole entire world, Mid-Ohio. It's and second ALL favorite. Also. Second favorite. <laughs> per actual favorite is Lime Rock. But this is number two for the same reason that I love Lime Rock. It's because it's one of the few that I've actually driven in real life. Oh, yeah. We'll have uh, the AOL Sportsman Truck Series. We're going to be going back to it. Last week, we were unable to do to it due to the wonderful iRacing patch update or a full season update. And uh, they had some issues running in that night, so we were not able to do it. So we're going to do it this Wednesday. Uh, Thursday night, TNT is going to New Hampshire. We're going to have a flat track to see how well these ARCA cars can run on it. Yeah, uh, it's going to be a blast. And then join us on Friday night. We'll be going to, uh, or we're doing the podcast on Friday night. We'll recap everything that we've done this past week and start talking about what's going on next week. And then uh, Sunday night, we'll be at AOL Cup Series running at Bristol Motor Speedway as well. And that's also another cut race for the round of 16, moving to the round of 12. So come out that night to see who makes it into the next round. So it's going to be a great time, a great week of racing. We're varied throughout, and Bristol's a great track to watch racing. It's single groove, but it's short. It's, it's double. It's, yeah. Oh, the, yeah. they finally updated it to where it can be double oh, now? You, 
you can run the bottom line you can hook it and run just about a tenth tenth off if not the same lap times now that's going to be fantastic to watch and i'm looking forward to it all right well from us here at ghost fire media we appreciate you guys coming out tonight and watching the race uh feel free to hit that like and subscribe buttons on facebook youtube tw twitter and twitch we'll see you next time all right thank you everyone Thank you for watching iRacing on the Ghostfire Media Network.